welcome everybody to chapel uh, for this Wednesday, September 9th. Uh, sorry we have to go back to doing this, but we want to be safe. We will go back to uh, in person as soon as we can. So, but we are still worshiping God, whether it's digitally, in person, or on your TV. It is still worship. So, I'm glad to be back from paternity leave. I uh, had a great month with my son, getting to bond with him and getting to know him better, getting to spend time with my wife. So, it was great. All right, friends, if you'll join me in the call to worship. No one is an island. We are all joined in Jesus Christ. Who else is like you, loving God? Who is like you, beautiful in holiness, awesome in all things you do for us? No one lives by themselves. No one dies by themselves. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Amen. Let us take some time for some quiet reflection. let us pray. Eternal God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need and even more. Give us joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Our Psalter comes from Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your inequity and who heals you all your disease, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. 
He will al- he will not always accuse, nor will, will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Amen. Let us again take a moment of quiet reflection. Friends, now this is the time we were, we would normally open up the service to uh, joys and concerns, prayers of the people, and I would ask what <clears throat> we can pray for. So at this time, um, whether aloud uh, or to yourself, I want to go ahead and say, tell, say, you know, lift up those who need prayer. Uh, I would lift up uh, new parents, Calvin, uh, daycare workers, uh, students as they go back to school, parents as they take their kids back to school, uh, all those here at Bristol Glen who may be suffering in mind, body, and spirit. So take a moment to lift up your joys and your concerns. Let us pray. That this day may be holy, good, and peaceful. We pray to you, O Lord. 
that your Holy Spirit may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We pray to the Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven our sins and offenses, we pray to the Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we pray to the Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we pray, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, trusting one another and all our life to Christ, we pray to the Lord. And we pray together the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture comes from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14, verse 1 through 12. Now listen now for the word of God. <clears throat> Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than the another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brothers or sisters? Or you, why do you despise your brothers and sisters? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to the Lord. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Here ends the word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we have here... Uh, a section where Paul is talking about the strong and the weak in faith. Uh, basically saying, uh, for those who eat whatever they want, do so in honor of the Lord, and who, those who abstain, do so in honor of the Lord. Uh, this comes out of uh, the church in Rome. There was a division. Uh, there was those who held to Jewish dietary laws. They were Jewish converts, and they, they held to the Jewish dietary laws. And there were Gentiles, Romans who came into the church, who did not 
observe Jewish dietary laws. So they were eating pork, they were eating, you know, shellfish, the things that Jews would Jews would have seen as unclean. Uh, this is where we get the idea of, uh, um, you know, even Jesus is himself and Paul say that uh, it is not what goes into your mouth that defiles your heart. It defiles the person. It's what comes out of your mouth because what comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. So what Paul is saying is that when Christians gather together for church, especially this church in Rome, uh, whether they're eating clean or unclean, it is not for the members of the church to judge each other as to what is righteous. Those who are eating whatever they like are not supposed to look at those who are vegan or eating vegetables or eating clean and say that is not right before God and vice versa. Paul says whatever you do, whatever you observe, whatever rule you observe, observe it to the glory of God. If you're not if you're not doing something for the glory of God, whether it's abstaining or not, why are you doing it? That will that's what will get you judged. Not whether or not you're eating the right things, but whether or not you judge your brother or sister and how they live their faith. That's how you'll be judged. So we he says to, uh, we don't live to ourselves, we live to God. So living to God and not ourselves allows us to be, to be better brothers and sisters to our brothers and sisters in the church. Whether we live or die, we live to the Lord. We're not here to live to our brothers or sisters for what they think of us. We are here to live and to love and take care of our brothers and sisters, but we're not here to live for the judgment and the glory of our brothers and sisters. We live for the judgment and the glory of God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You know, Tom, Dick, and Harry at church are not the Lord. Their judgment, as far as, as, far as my righteousness or your righteousness doesn't matter does not matter we live to the Lord whether we live or die we are the Lord's we're not John's we're not Pastor Sal's we're not Pastor Todd's we live to the Lord you know it's very easy in church circles especially church even you know it didn't stop since church went online the culture of church did not end how many people have said to a pastor or someone in the in the congregation well unless pastor so and so does this i'm not giving my time or giving my pledge uh, i don't like the way that pastor so and so preaches so i'm not inviting my friends to come to church or uh, i'll come back to church when Pastor so-and-so, stop saying this from the pulpit. Pastor is there to preach the gospel and to love you and to point you to the gospel. The pastor is not there to cater to your needs. The only need he's there to cater to is filling you and teaching you and guiding you in the gospel. The only thing the chaplain is there to do is to support you and guide you in the ways of the gospel and to represent the gospel to you and to support you. And likewise, those who go church to church with you, um, someone sitting in your pew does not ruin their relationship or yours with Christ. Your placement in the physical building of the church does not elevate you or lower you in relation to your salvation or the other's salvation. 
Because someone does something in the physical building that you do not like or you do not approve of does not mean that they are not living their life and attempting to live their life to the glory of God and be faithful Christians. We are not the judge of others' faithfulness. There's only one judge. And he lived and he reigned and he died and he rose again from that cross. He's the only one who gets to judge us. I don't get to judge you. Your pastor doesn't get to judge you. <laughs> Your neighbors in the pews most definitely don't get to judge you and you don't get to judge them. Ultimately, the only judge is Jesus. If they do something legitimately wrong, you have the authority in Scripture calls you to correct them. But if it is simply because they're doing something you don't like or you think is wrong, you think is distasteful or not proper, if they're doing something for the glory of God, it is proper for them to work out with Jesus. Period. End of story. End of story. Each of us will be accountable to God. Paul says that this is the good news for sinners of whom I am the worst. You have to approach this as not, oh, look at Susie Q. She's the worst sinner. No. Oh, look at me. I'm the worst sinner. Oh, and by the way, the person next to you in the pew should also be saying, oh, look at me. I'm the worst sinner. And come before the, for the, before the, the judgment seat that way. God's not going to judge you on your neighbor's sins. He's going to judge you on your sin. So let us come together in faithfulness and try to lift each other up and not judge each other. Because trust me, I see it. I hear about it. Amen. All right, friends, let's take a moment, a few moments of quiet reflection.
Friends, we're in this together. <sighs> this crazy thing called life. We're in it together to survive it together. Um, so let's worry about our own sins. About our own journeys. Because if we are <clears throat> in a right relationship with, our, with God ourselves, we can help lift up our neighbors. <laughs> I'm thoroughly convinced that on Judgment Day, the Lord Jesus will ask us one question and one question only. Did you trust that I loved you? Just as you are, not as you should be. Because none of us are as we should be. But God loves us. And God will judge us according to that. So friends, go out from this place knowing you are loved and you're accepted despite your sins. But also know that those are the sins that you shall have to answer to, to God. Not the sins of your neighbor. Your sins. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and place upon you peace, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.